Oh yeah, where have the soul men gone? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there that's tuning in, we want to remind you we're here every Sunday night from 6 to 9 o'clock p.m. on Buddy Guy Radio. That's right, we play the best blues, classic R&B, soul, gospel, jazz, and everything in between. That was uh, Where Have the Soul Men Gone, which is by uh, my guest, who I am so happy to say I've got on the live line with me this evening, uh, none other than the legendary Johnny Rawls. John, Mr. Rawls, can you hear me okay? I can hear you very well. All right, how you doing? Uh, how you doing, Mr. Rawls? I'm doing. I'm doing. Doing great. <laughs> That's good to hear. How have you been? How have you been holding up during this pandemic? Well, like the old people say, I'm barely holding on, Ooh. but I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. Good, good, good. Well, I, we we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with us this evening. We've got listeners all over the country tuned in. And um, right, we, de we right. definitely want to hear from you. And, you know, I would love if we could talk a little bit um, about some of your uh, musical upbringings and, and sort of where you were born and raised. I was reading that you were born in, is it Purvis, Mississippi? Exactly, yes. That's where I'm at right now, in Purvis, Mississippi. Oh, yes. It, could you could you Could you tell us a little bit about... When you were growing up, what were some of the artists that you were listening to? What was some of the music that they were playing in the household when you were growing up? Well, you know, my brother and I, we had records by Rita Franklin, Smokey Robinson, James Brown, and, you know, the good music era, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And on the jukeboxes, you know, they had O.V. Wright, B.B. King, Bobby Bland, Sam Cooke, the good music. You know what I'm saying? The Temptations and everybody, you know. So we come up in a good music era, you know. Absolutely. We're very fortunate. And, and when when you were growing up, what at what age? When did you just? When did you discover that you had a musical talent? Well, I haven't discovered that yet. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I always loved the music. I always loved the music, you know. And that in my hometown, uh, in 1965, they started a high school band. And I started playing clarinet. You know, I was always interested, very interested in music. And I played saxophone, and I ended up playing all the instruments, trumpet, tuba, everything, baritone. And Ooh. so I kind of like mastered all the instruments and got to playing piano and in Mississippi, we come up around a lot of music, a lot of great musicians, a lot of great people, you know. You know you know what I'm saying? A lot of great artists from yeah. already in Mississippi, you know. You got Malico Records, you got Stax, you got Muscle Shows. All these artists were right here. And I had the opportunity when I met my band director in the eighth grade to join his dance band. At the, that's how I met O.B. Wright, Z.D. Hill, Winter Hightower, Jimmy Hughes, Little Johnny Taylor. We backed all these people. The list just go on and on. Man, you know, that's that how is I got, got into it. <laughs> that is amazing. What what was it? What was it like working with some of those? You know, the names that you just dropped. Those are, I mean, those are legends. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like it's like it's like in my hometown they would come put the poster, of, you know they call them ply cards back then. Be a poster of a uh, O.V. Wright, Jackie Wilson, and a whole bunch of them at the New Orleans Municipal Auditorium, and then the Hi Hat Club, which was a legendary club here in Hattiesburg, which is like ten miles from my hometown. And once you played there. That means you made it. You had to be successful to play the high head club. Everybody in show business came through there. You had about 1,500 people, you know. And so, matter of fact, today I have a Mississippi Trail marker out front of the high head club that I'm on with Tyrone Davis and Lil Milton. 
a historical marker that's out there now, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was just, it was like a dream come true, really. I'm, I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> well, and, and I think it's rightfully deserved, too. That's I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, you know, I, I have to ask, because I know I was reading that uh, at some point you joined O.V. Wright's back in band, and then if I read this correctly, you were the music director for O.V. Wright's band. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, I, I put a band together for him. In the, see, I met him when I was in high school. And then when I got 21, I moved to Milwaukee, and they stayed up with me, and he wanted me to put him a band together, a touring band. And so I was with him from that time until, the, until he died. I was with him the day he passed away, just him and me and him, you know. Man, what was it like so, uh, working with O.V. What was that? What was what was it well, like working with him? Well, it was like it was like um, working one working with one of the greatest singers that ever walked the earth. You know, a man that was a master of songs, and we play all these places, Alabama and different places, Texas, and where we went, the crowds would be massive. They loved it, O.V. Right, you know. It, just, it was just something about him. His records touched so many people. And never have I seen like a hundred or two hundred women in front of a stage, literally crying. Ooh. You know, you know, heartbroken women. You know that these dirty men did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it 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 was, it was a dream come true. Wow, that is that is true, just man. I. I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall back then. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I'm telling you. So, now. It, it, it was great. Now, when 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 O.V. passed, um, you the band, the Ace of Spades band, you all kept performing qu- quite some time after. Am I right about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you correct about that. Charles Evers. And Perry Payton, Charles of Megas Evers' brother, had the Mississippi homecoming every year. And he the one that said, I want you to call you. You, you know, I met him through when I was O.V. right? He really liked me. We became sociable, you know. And Charles Evers told me, he said, I want you to keep that name, the O.V. right band, the Ace of Spades. And he really helped me a lot in my career. Charles Evers did. Yes, he did. And when, so it he would put me on the Mel Gilbert's homecoming every year with B.B. King and different people. I, I, and I, I was just about to bring up B.B. King, and I, I think I read that you all also worked with like Little Milton and Bobby Blue Bland. Oh, yeah. And Little Johnny all Taylor. Of them guys, all of them. Amazing. All of them. That is My amazing. life has been enriched with soul. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you a little quick story. One day, me and O.V. went down to Greenville, Mississippi to get a deposit, you know, some money for a show, you know. And when we got there, we was, you know, Lil Milton lived, he, that's his hometown, so he be down there a lot. And then we was at Anime's Cafe, you heard the record Anime's Cafe, and we were standing outside on the side of the club, and here I was, like, Almost in this alley with OV with his shirt tail out. I'm standing here with OV Wright and Lil Milton, two of the greatest singers ever lived, just sociably hanging out, you know? And when I was a little kid, I would always play the records, you know, for a nickel, you know? And OV Wright had a record called A Nickel and a Nail. Right, right. It was great. Woo! That is. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, you know, you you might have to write a book at some point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could I couldn't write no book because I could never tell it all. The book would never end. It would never end. So, can you tell me a little bit about when you decided to um, go out on your own and and start your own band? At what point did you? create your own band when did you start um working as a solo artist well that came uh after OV died 
I was going to record a record with OB in like in 79 or something like that. I, I recorded a song. I, I recorded a record. And it was a 45. And I just took it to the radio station. And the guy just, you know, back then you just walk in the radio station. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so I just walked in the radio station. The guy just put it on with the plan. And it became like a regional hit. You know, then they went to put me on the show with Bobby Warmack and all kinds of different people, you know. So I went on and on from there. And I started producing a lot of records. I started writing, producing, putting out records, you know. just I just went crazy with it, man. Yeah, and I, you know, I know that you um, have released some recordings on JSP and then you've had your own uh, label, Cat Food Records. If I'm right, right, uh huh, right, you correct. Okay, I did. I produced like 30 albums for. I was like an A and R man for JSP Records, and I would find the artists. You know, it's a it's a England based record label. Yes, you know, it's a European based record label, and I would find the artists, and the guy would trust me to record whoever I picked. You know. And I did 30 albums for them with all various different artists. I even recorded a uh, producer, uh, Buddy's brother, Phil guy. Yes. Yes. I even produced an album on him. And then I had a friend, which is still my friend, Miss Deetra Farr. And she was the first <laughs> female that was on that I asked the guy. He really didn't want to do it because he, uh, he always wanted to just get to our players. That's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. He never had recorded a female. And so we got together, Miss Farr, you know, and I, and we wrote some songs, and and um, it became a very big success, a very big success. Yes. You know, and so it was a good success, man. Well, you, you're right about that, because list, our listeners here, we love that record by Miss Dietra Farr, The Search Is Over. And uh, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of songs off of that record that they asked me to play yeah. I every pinned, week. I pinned most of those songs. I, I wrote that song, The Search Is Over. Yeah. You know, she was a little hard-headed at first, you know, but uh, she came on it. <laughs> <laughs> She came on in. She she cooked me some white beans and turkey necks and stuff, and we got together. And as some I really want to say, but I'm not gonna say it right now. I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you gonna start some mess tonight? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. But for the interview over, I got some I want the world to know. Oh, okay, well we'll get. Oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me in Chicago, my favorite city, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I, um, I, I was going to ask you a question. I want to talk to you about some of the other artists that you've worked with uh, throughout the years. And actually, we... Maybe I want to. Well, yeah. Let me ask you this. I want to talk about um, Otis Clay. You and you, oh, yeah. you were really good friends with Otis Clay, and I uh, loved that man. I loved that man with all my heart and soul. Can you tell me? Uh, can, will you tell us a bit about uh, your friendship with Otis and and you know how? Did, when did you first meet Otis and what was it like working with him? I met Otis Clay at the High Chaparral in Chicago in the 70s. You know, back then, we'd be on the show like Tyrone Day with B.B. King, Bobby Bland, O.B. Wright, John and Taylor. They would have like a, a mass amount of people on one show. You know, it was just like tremendous. And Otis Clay would always come talk to O.B. and we would be, you know, talk a little bit. And we kept running into each other like that for years, for decades, really, you know. And then one day in Phoenix, Arizona, after O.V. died and everybody was dead, you know, we was on a Phoenix Blues Festival together. And this guy, Bob Corator, you might know him, he got a radio show. After the show, he asked me and Otis to come do something together. We just me and him in the guitar, you know. Mm-hmm. And we, we got there and we got to talking about gospel and and this kind of stuff. And, you know what I mean? You got to talk about gospel. 
And we became, we just hooked up. And I asked him, I said, man, won't you record a couple of songs on my CD with me, my album with me? He said, okay. He came down to Texas and recorded with me. And then I said, Otis, I said, let me produce an album on you. He said, no. He said, no. He said, let's do an album together. And I never know what he had. And we did that, man. That album took off called Soul Brothers. You know, we were touring Europe together and Canada and everywhere and unfortunately passed away and I was crushed. I was crushed. I loved it, that man. I I understand and 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 yeah, I'm so you said the name of that C D was called Soul Brothers, right? That was you and Soul Otis Brothers, Clay. Right. Okay. And we're gonna make sure that everybody knows how to get that one too, 'cause that and then you released another uh album dedicated to Otis Clay called I Miss Otis Clay. We love that song too. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes I did. I recorded that in his honor, you know. It's a heartfelt album, you know. Yes. yes I did that in his honor, you know. So he always was there for me. I could be say, Otis, I'm coming to Chicago. He said, just come. I had to tell him what time I was coming or nothing. You know, never had to tell him we were like on a Sunday evening, me and him would get in the car and just ride around on the west side or the south side to clubs and just sit in. You know, it was just such a great time, man. You know, hanging out with him. Uh, absolutely. You know, everybody loved Otis Clay. Everybody loved Otis Clay. Yeah, yes, yep, they sure did, yep. <laughs> He's a great man. Yes, yes, yes. Great man with some great music. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What? So uh, now, t tell me about. So, I want to talk a little bit about where have the soul been gone, which is one of your latest releases this year. Uh, That's true. I want to talk to you about that. What? What was the inspiration behind where have the soul men gone? Well, the music today, and I look around. And all you got now is like a bunch of guitar players taking a two-hour guitar solo, which is cool. But you know, I miss this. I, I, I miss <laughs> the soul man. You know, I traveled and toured with James Carr. You know, I miss the great song. I miss the great, like pouring water on a drowning man at the dark end of the street. Yes, you know the great songs. I miss hearing the great songs, man. You know. I'm right and there I'm with you. to myself, where where the soul man gone? Am I here all alone? Where's Tyrone? You know, right? You know what? What is? Where they gone? You know, Little Milton. Where they gone? Solomon Bird. You know, where right. they gone? Right. You know, that's well, That's the question I was asking myself. You know, Z Z Hio. You know, where they go? B B Bobby. You know, right. And now you know it's it's hard to go here, like the OJ's. You know, and these are national treasures. You know, people that's very they've been the only one left. You know that you could really go hear some good music, man. You know, right. You know, I play guitar, but I don't want to hear like a thirty, forty-five minute guitar solo. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. You know, I love blue. Listen, I love blue. I love blue, but I don't want to hear Shepherd for three hours. Woo. I want to hear, I want, some people might get mad, but I don't care. I want to hear a great song. You know what I mean? I, I want to hear a great song. I you know? I and understand. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You know, those great. Those great blues artists are not here anymore. You know, like Otis Rush and Junior Wales and, you know, better guys here. But those guys could take a blues song and make you really like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh. You know, with so much emotion and feeling in it, you know? Magic Sam and all them people, you know? Right, right. Them people, them, them were real blues players, man. They they set the house on fire. Right, right. You know, and and you know what else? You know what else, man? 
they were clean. They were dressed. They were clean. Yep. You know, this thing now is just a total turn off of me, man. Like somebody just changed it all or just got to adorn the lawn and come on stage and play. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's, it's a turn off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a turn off for me. I, I'm sorry. I know some people might get mad, but I don't care. Well, that's I okay. I just got to say it. I got to say it. <laughs> we, you know, I've talked. Dress to... up, dress up, and play me a song. Yes. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we we've had this cover you know i've had this conversation with other artists who've been on when we interview them who have said the same thing about you know being professional and dressing up for the stage <laughs> so, you know you you know you don't have to put on a tuxedo you know what i'm saying but my but my god man, jesus christ i mean <laughs> It's, it's an embarrassment to the audience. It's disrespectful to the audience, man. Mm -hmm. It's totally disrespectful. But on another note, now nah, everything's good. I just had to say that. No, there aren't. That, I, I, we, I thank you for saying that. <laughs> we need someone to say that. And I, I think some of the listeners are probably going to agree with you on that because. Uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, something that constantly gets brought up. Is like as you said, don't go from mowing the lawn to getting on the stage. <laughs> oh Lord! Hey man, you know these guys be standing up holding these signs say, "Need money? I work for food." That's where the, that's where some of the singers look now on stage. <laughs> oh Lord! You know when you put them off the expressway and they say, "Need money? I work for food." God bless you. You could go to some of these stages and hand them guys that same sign, and it'll look <laughs> just like them. <laughs> oh, 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 Lord. <laughs> well, if you think I'm lying, just go check it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know you tell the and truth. And then if some of the band guys are listening to this and they're embarrassed, you should be. Woo -wee. You should be. <laughs> it's disrespectful. Yes, yes. Disrespectful. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. I want to know, what is it that you do? How do you get into the you know, when you start writing songs? How do you get into that creative mode? Do songs just come to you? Uh, do you sit down and have to write them out? How do How does that work for you? Well, you know the word work for me. I write songs about true life events. You know, a lot of people think I recorded like my my twenty twenty second album or something like that, and I don't produce maybe close to five hundred thousand records. But what where I write songs about is about true life events. A lot of people think a lot of these songs are about myself, but very few of them are about myself. You know what I mean? Maybe one or two about me. But all the other hundreds of songs I've written about my friends and something that I've seen, you know, happen to somebody. You know? Mm -hmm. The only song I wrote about myself was a song called I Can't Win for Losing. Woo! You know? Every time I get a nickel, somebody want to die. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the way I write. You know, that's the way I write. Yes, yeah, yes. Well, so let me ask you, you know, as you think about down through the years and, 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 and some of your, you know, your experiences out here in the music industry, what are some lessons that you've learned out here in the music business and maybe some advice that you would even give to some of the younger, new, up and coming artists, I think I know what one of them is. But what what are yeah. some other <laughs> what are some other lessons well, that you've learned out here? What I would like for them to learn is if you're going to do it, do it and don't give up, and try your best to come up with a song. Don't just be a jam band. You know what I mean? Don't just be a a Tuesday night, Monday night jam band. Try to write a song, you know what I mean? Try to write a good song, you know. If you want to be an artist, try to write a good song. 
Yes. And remember, back in the children days, when me and OV now, you always would have to get, remember to get paid before you play. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, nowadays it really ain't like that, you know. But uh, that one thing to remember back then, get paid before you play. You you say you had to get pay before you tell, tell can you tell, tell me did you have some did you have an experience with somebody ran out the back door on you oh man we've been we got stranded a many times Ooh. <laughs> we got stranded a lot i'm, t- I'm talking about when i got stranded with ov right we was out in ben ruiz one night me uh gd on little janet tell this man didn't pay nobody he sent the deposit, and then we did two shows. They'd be like, I'm going to pay you after the show. Y'all go and finish the show. He didn't pay nobody. What? Oh, in, no. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, me, Marvin Cease, and Roy C. The, the, the man was a disc jockey. He left the place and didn't pay nobody. That happened a lot. Woo. Yes, it, yes, it did. Yes, it did. What man. what what is it like now? <clears throat> what's some of the differences that you've had performing in the states versus overseas? You know, like over in Europe and whatnot. What what are some of the differences? What's it like? What's the difference to you? What a difference is this: the money is like night and day greater over in Europe. You know what I mean? And the people over there are like night and day more grateful and so glad to see you and standing ovations. They standing in line before the show even start to get in to see you. You know, mm-hmm. it's great. Mm-hmm. You know, in America, most most fans and people take it for granted because they got it all the time. You know, but those people over there, they can't see a Mississippi soul artist every weekend or every once a year. You know, so when you go over there, the crowds, be places be sold out. Mm. And they, they, they do like a, every night you got to do like a half hour or 40 minute encore every night. My God. They love it, man. They love you to death. I can't wait to get back over there. I, I bet. I can't understand. Wait. I know I've heard from a lot of people that it feels like they appreciate our music more yeah. overseas that they appreciate it more. Yeah. I did some tours with D to Men, D to Fuck did some tours over there. I, I can't tell it all, but I ain't gonna tell it. But we did a lot of tours over in Europe together. Oh, okay. You you said you weren't gonna tell it? No, I ain't gonna tell it right now, though, so she ain't gotta get scared. But, uh, <laughs> but but we did some great, we really seriously, we did some great, great tours together. We did a 30-day tour one time all over England, Poland, Finland, you know, Greece, you know. It, it was great. Yes. It was great. Yes. Know? I'm trying to think, was that record out there in the search, though? I don't know if that was out. I think, I think it was. I don't know if it was out there or not. But uh, we did some good tours together. Mm-hmm. She helped me out a lot. She helped me out a lot. Showed me around the ropes in Chicago and, you know, stuff like that. Actually, a lot of European stuff, too. She really, really, really popular over in Europe, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we, really popular well I know we love Dietra, and we, we love Dietra. And I, every week, I have yeah, to play Yeah, but y'all Dietra. only knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, and oh, you gonna make me tell? You gonna make me tell something after a while? I ain't. I better get off the phone for us. You know. <laughs> oh, oh Lord. Lord. Oh, I, I, I ain't you. gonna tell it. I ain't gonna tell it. Oh Lord! And now I I know that you've um, you know I've read you've won quite a, a few uh, blues music awards, and um, oh yeah. And goodness, I mean, I know some of your past recordings have won like the Critics Choice Award for uh, in uh, uh, for Living Blues. Uh, let me ask you a question because you've gotten a lot of accolades, and as you mentioned, the, the Mississippi Trail Marker, too. Yeah. What are some things? Is there is there anything that 
you know, as you look back on your career and, and what you've done so far, is there anything that you still hope to do or hope to accomplish that you haven't been able to do yet? Well, one thing I would like to do, everything I've done is great, but one thing I would like to do before I leave, before I check out, I would like to leave the world of song that I play forever, like my girl or something like that. I would like to do that. It might not could happen, but there's one thing I would like to do. I would like to leave the world with a song that they'll play forever. Okay. You yeah. know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I see. But if I don't, I'm happy with life. I'm happy with my kids, my career. And, you know, when I recently moved back home to Mississippi, and I'm, I'm really, my life is in place, you know. Right, right. It's fine in place, you know. And that's a good, that's a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. I, I see a lot of folks are, I just want to let you know, uh, a lot of people that are listening, they're, they're, they're sending me messages, and they are agreeing with you, and uh, folks are saying that you've been telling the truth, especially about the, the what attire people need to wear. <laughs> they are saying it, so they, I had to let you know that. Uh, I, I see Dietra Fires on here saying you are telling the truth too. So, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Is there is there is there anything else that you think our listeners should know? You know, you you by all means you can tell it whatever it is you want to tell Johnny. You can go ahead and tell it. <laughs> you can do that. Well, you know, I just want the people to know that we plan to get through this pandemic. You know, so we can get back to plan. So I can get back to that Chicago blues, so I can get back to Buddy Guys, I can get back across country, across Europe, and get back to work and get things back to normalcy, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And you yes. know, we got a change of administration in the White House, and and uh, somebody might get mad about that, but I don't care, you know what I mean? Right. But anyway... I want them to get back to normalcy so we can get back to playing, get back to laughing and loving and having fun again. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I have to let you know, did you first say you can tell it? <laughs> I have to let you know that, by no, the way. No, I ain't going to tell it. I ain't going to tell it. She, she ain't going to get she ain't gonna get me in no trouble. Oh, she, she hear you loud and clear. <laughs> she ain't going to get me in no trouble. <laughs> Oh, we go. Nah, that's my out. friend. That's my friend, ODK. <laughs> I wanted her to record a record, another record with me, you know, but this pandemic came, you know. Oh, that would be nice. You know, I love that, you know, <clears throat> when Dietra first gave me, this is a long time ago. I was young and gave me the search is over. I used to love that song called Stealing Your Love. It's getting harder oh, and harder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey, that's a tough song now, boy. That song got to, you better leave you better leave that song alone now, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just don't talk about that song. <laughs> you oh. know what? Now that I'm talking to you, I remember you now. Oh. Now that I'm talking to you, I remember you. Oh, okay. I met you. I met you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I met you a while back. Yeah, yeah, I remember you now. Yeah. But I appreciate you having me on your show. And uh, tell all the fans that they can hook me up with JohnnyRawlsBlues.com. Send me a message to a Facebook friend me. You know, Johnny Rawls, you know. And yes. Send me a message and let me know what you think. Yes, yes, we'll do that. And tell them to order that, order that new CD, Where Have the Soul Man Go. Yes. Yes, yes, and we want them to order that one along with all the rest of them too. The, your uh, live in Europe, uh, we want them to oh, look yeah. at. I miss oh, Otis you know about Clay. That one, huh? Oh yes, you oh yes. You up on it, man? <laughs> yeah, you up on it? I see. Yeah, well, we're we're playing, we're playing, we're playing the music too because the people love it. So we we love this. Yeah. Uh, we've been playing "Running yeah. Back to You." That's our jam right there. So. Yeah, we okay. love it. We love it. We love it. Yeah, yeah. Keep running, man. All them songs. You better leave them songs. You better leave them titles long, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I sound like you getting ready to tell something. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna tell it. I ain't gonna tell it. I'm gonna leave it long. 
Yeah. Well, it, well, you know, thank you for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate it. And I want everybody to stay safe and be glad we get back to what we can do our thing. Yeah, well, thank you, too. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you ever change your mind, we can, like that song, Can I Change My Mind, we can we can get you back on if you want to tell it. So. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Yeah, I got I to gotta be up my nerves before I can tell it. <laughs> <laughs> But I love I love y'all, man, and thank y'all so very much. And I can't wait to get back to Chicago. Okay, well, we can't wait for you to get back here too. So uh, we are, we appreciate you, Mr. Johnny Rawls, uh, calling us. We're talking with us down there in Purvis, Mississippi. So we appreciate you, and uh, we uh, we I'm gonna keep playing some good music that you have released, and uh, I, I I look forward to seeing some more music from you, and and hopefully, as you said, hopefully you and Miss Dietra can do another record. We would love that. I know I would. Yeah, oh yeah. We definitely gonna do something together once this uh pandemic is over. We're gonna get together and do something. Okay, uh oh. <laughs> oh sooky sooky now. We're gonna do something. <laughs> well all right. anyway, y'all take care of yourself and thank you so very much for having me. All right, you too. <laughs> you too, Mr. Rose. You have a good one. You take care. Be safe. I love Chicago. <laughs> bye bye. All right, bye bye. <laughs> that that was uh that was Mr. Johnny Rawls, the legendary Johnny Rawls. We were talking with him live here on Blues and News with Brother Jacob. We're here every Sunday from six to nine and uh, p.m. Central Standard Time, and uh, that was I like talking with him. That was I like that. Um,